everyone, welcome back to Lone Fox. Today I have a new video for you and this is going to be an Ikea hacks video. Um, you guys love these videos. They're probably one of my favorite videos to make as well just because I personally love going shopping to Ikea so this gives me like that excuse to actually go. Today I'm doing four different projects for you guys. They are amazing. I think this might be my favorite Ikea hacks that I've actually done. I think the outcome of all four projects is so good. I'm really excited for you guys to see it. And if you don't know what an Ikea hacks video is, I've done them on my channel before so I'll put some cards up on the screen and also link in the description box the other ones I've done. In case you like this video, you want to check out the other ones as well. But basically what it is, I go to Ikea, I find things that they are selling, affordable items, and I just kind of hack them, DIY them, and repurpose them and make them into new items, whether it just be like changing them a little bit to make them into something more personalized or just like completely taking the item and turning it into something that it's not even supposed to be to begin with. And it's just a lot of fun. So if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, guys. I post brand new DIY and home decor content every single week. And if you would like to follow Lone Fox Home on Instagram, I'll put it on the screen for you. I post more behind the scenes type stuff over there. And I also have my own personal Instagram, which is I'm Drew Scott, where you can check out my fashion, my clothing, my style. Like, yes, check this out. I don't know what that did for you, but. And last but not least, before jumping into today's video, if you guys have any video ideas of content you would like to see on this channel, literally anything at all, let me know in the comment section below. And if you guys see something that you like, like if you see someone else's suggestion that you like, please thumbs it up so it goes higher up in the comments. It just gives me a better idea of what you guys would like to see content wise, and maybe it gives me a couple more ideas for videos to create in the near future. But without further ado, let's just jump on into today's video. For this first project, we are using the Low Hals Jute Rug. I believe that's how you pronounce it from Ikea. I'm gonna butcher all these Ikea names. And it's just a really pretty natural toned jute rug. And it's like a knotted texture to it as well, which I really love. And it's three foot by five foot. It was only $30 at Ikea. So we're gonna just kind of amp it up and give it a little bit of a almost Urban Outfitter sort of bohemian vibe to it. And what I'm starting off by doing is using a half inch wide masking tape. And this is just from any store you can find masking tape at. And I'm going down and just masking off the side sections that I don't want my paint to go on. So I'm creating almost this linear pattern down each edge of it. And I'm doing this on the three foot side uh, just because I wanted the end caps of the rug to just sort of have that uh, pattern on it as opposed to having to mask off the entire rug and give it a, a complete like new pattern, which you could do of course, but I just wanted to give each end a little bit of a pattern because I love the way that this looks, especially when it comes to styling in your home decor space. And the thing that I really did love about this masking tape was that every two knots on the street rug, if you can tell every two knots, is half of an inch. So every two knots was covered by a piece of tape, which was really nice to keep it very even and very clean. And I went down and just kind of gave it this random pattern. It was very simple and easy. And I used um, just a little bit of folk art white paint. And the thing about this jute rug is that it really did soak up a lot of paint. So you're gonna use a lot of paint for this project. And all you're gonna do is just go in with your paintbrush, make sure that it's loaded with a good amount of paint and just paint in between all the masking tape sections. But the nice thing is that if you go over the edges, of course that masking tape is gonna keep that paint away from the rug. So when you pull it off after it's completely dry, it's going to have this really, really pretty, almost like tribal-esque linear pattern on each end. And I went down, and you can also do a second coat of white paint if you want to, but I kind of liked the idea of just having a white paint like just brushed over the top. So you kind of still are able to see a tiny bit of the natural rug through it. I thought it kind of gave it more of a natural woven vibe as opposed to like you're painting this on. So just continue this all the way down and make sure to fill in all of your sections with the white paint and go back and add more if needed. Once you are completely done and it has dried for about 15 minutes or so, I just went ahead and pulled off that masking tape. And this was the very satisfying part. I love pulling off masking tape if you've painted it correctly and nicely. And this project turned out amazing. It really created a beautiful pattern to the end of the rug, which I think was really, really nice. And this is kind of an overall vibe of what it looked like. And once you have done that side, you're just going to honestly repeat the same exact process to the other side, flipping it around, masking tape off, masking, taping it, taping off the end section and then going in with your paint again and just painting it, letting it dry, pulling it off. And all in all, you guys, this project really only took me an hour to complete and I am completely in love with the outcome. I think it really gave this rug a whole new aesthetic. Oh, 
On to our next project, we are using the Lindrande Circular Object Sculpture item. And I'm also gonna be using five different assorted yarns in different colors and textures just to add a lot of visual interest. And what I'm starting off by doing is taking my little circular sculpture object from Ikea and a little bit of gray yarn, and I'm going to be tying it around each side of the circle. And this is going to be our first strand for the tapestry that we're creating. It's kind of like a tapestry. It's also kind of like macrame. And it's also a very simple version of both of those. So what I'm starting off by doing is taking the yellow yarn, cutting it to about seven inch strands. And I'm going to be looping these onto the bottom section and you can cut them to whatever length you want, however many strands you want. This is totally up to you. And this is very like personalized and customized as well, which is what I love. So you can change up the colors for your personal room decor space. Or if you have like a different color scheme in your living room, you can change it up. So this is a very customizable project, which I love as well, because it definitely can be a perfect little statement piece for one of your rooms. So what I'm going in next with is this light colored yarn. And I'm actually doing two strands of this. And the nice thing is that you can definitely like do different styles of knots if you want to, uh, different macrame knots. I'm just keeping it very simple and just doing like the traditional loop and then putting the ends of the strands through the loop and then just pulling them through. And I added the second little section on a couple inches up from the first and I'm looping on my next section. So these are just gonna overlay and you're gonna wanna make sure that the strands don't sort of cover that bottom section because you're gonna want the layers to sort of peek through. So I'm going on and adding on my second section up here right above the first one with this nice yarn here that has an alternating sort of light yellow and then white and then I'm also adding a little bit of the blue yarn and then I'm going to finish it off with just the white color that we used on the bottom left as well. For the third section at the top, you're gonna repeat the same process as the bottom two. Um, alternate your yarn colors and textures to make it really interesting and fun. And then I think that this total of three different layers really gave a ton of visual interest. You can do the top section as well if you wanted to, but I kind of just liked having that top section open. And this is the finished project. Project three, we're using the girly white pillowcase from Ikea, and this is the $3 simple white pillowcase. This project literally costed $3 because all I'm using is some black fabric paint, a paintbrush, and the pillowcase. And what I am doing is creating a very quirky, whimsical, cutesy, sort of astrology-esque pattern around the edge of this pillow. And what I mean by that is I'm doing a lot of different moons, a lot of different stars, uh, planets, dots, bits, bobs, options, items, anything that I wanted to add that sort of fit the vibe is what I'm doing. And it was based off of an actual Urban Outfitters blanket that I saw. It was a blanket that said save space or space saves. I don't remember exactly what it says. So I'll put a picture of it on the screen for you guys. But I liked the vibe of the um, elements that it had on it. I thought it looked really organic and kind of handmade, which I love that vibe. So I thought I would paint it on this pillow. So this is sort of like a paint with me little project right now. I'll let you guys watch exactly what I'm doing, but I can't give you much direction because it's all very freehand. I just wanted to share this project with you because I think it turned out so cute in the end. I think this would look amazing in your bedroom or in a kid's bedroom for sure, or on your couch, whatever it might be. If you're wanting a pillow with an astrology element, this is the one for you. Moving on to my favorite project, I'm obsessed with the outcome of this one. I'm using the App Tit Lig cutting boards. And these are $9.99 each at Ikea. I got three of them. They're just cutting boards. So they're in the kitchen section if you are at Ikea. And what I am doing is using a ruler and I'm marking in three quarters of an inch on either side of the cutting board corners on all four corners. And you're going to want to do this on all three cutting boards because this is the project that we're using the power tool in. Yes, I'm using a power tool. I went to Home Depot. I bought a drill because, you know, I decided it was time to amp up my DIYs a little bit. I'm using this drill and a, I think it's like a half inch wide drill bit 
and I'm going very, very slowly. That is the key when going through these cutting boards, especially this one, because this is sort of a compressed wood cutting board. So what you're gonna wanna do is just go very, very slowly with the drill and just sort of take your time, make sure that it goes through nicely and sort of blow off the pieces as you go so you're able to really see the hole that you're creating. And these are going to be where we're going to be putting our rope through and then tying the knot and creating this into a hanging, suspending bookshelf, I guess you could say. Uh, you can do this just one time and make it like a suspending nightstand from the ceiling next to your bed. I've seen that on Pinterest a lot. Or you can create a bookshelf like I am doing. So I found this rope at Home Depot as well. It's just a nylon rope that was really pretty and very, very optic white. And I'm cutting two strands to a very, very long length. And then I'm going to be looping them around at the very center point to create the center loop that's going to be used for hanging this uh, shelf up in the end. So just tighten it really, really good to make sure that it's very tight. You can also add a little bit of glue to that knot if you want to. And what I'm starting off by doing is using a Sharpie to measure down where I want my first set of knots to be. So you're going to want to string through all four strands on all four corners. And it might take a little budging room because you're going to want your rope to be pretty snug in that hole. So you're going to want to twist it through. Once you get down to that Sharpie point, you're going to want to tie the knot and sort of cover the Sharpie inside of the knot. So make sure that Sharpie kind of goes inside of the knot. And if your end of your rope does get a little bit mangled or um, distressed, you can also just use a lighter like I did there to sort of melt it back together. It makes it a lot easier, almost as if you're threading a needle through a hole. It's a little bit easier than just a thread. So what I'm doing is continuing the process on all four corners, tying knots as I go. And the knots are going to be what actually suspends the shelf. So when you lift it up, that's what's going to suspend it. I flipped over the shelf and I'm going to do the same thing again to add my second shelf in there. So I measured down about 18 inches, did a Sharpie mark on 18 inches on all four strands, and I'm going to string through my second shelf. I feel like this can kind of be a little challenging with how I'm talking to you guys about it, but when you see me doing it on the screen, I feel like it's a little bit easier to understand. And you're just going to complete your knots once again, uh, completing the knots and making sure that the Sharpie marks are hidden on the inside. And once you have all four of them tied, you can add your third shelf as well, and this is going to finish off your hanging shelf system. Okay, weren't those projects pretty good? They were pretty good. You have to give it a thumbs up for sure. Let me know which project was your guys' favorite in the comment section below. I think the hanging shelf just has to be my favorite. It turned out exactly what I wanted it to look like. And guys, that hanging shelf took me $35 to make. Like each of the cutting boards were $10 and then the rope was $5. So it wasn't that expensive at all. $35 for like a large, really interesting hanging shelf. And you can add more layers too as it goes down. Just make sure that wherever you're mounting it from is very, very sturdy. And I also totally love the yarn tapestry circular object thingy. That was a fun one too. I think it turned out really nicely and I'm excited to go home and style it on my shelf. But without further ado, I'm not gonna keep you guys for much longer. Make sure to subscribe to the Lone Fox channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And I think that that is about all. Also leave your guys' video suggestions in the comment section below. I'd love to see them, check them out. And I will catch you guys all in the next one. Have an amazing day. Bye guys. <laughs>